So that was something that changed many people's lives in the field of Parkinson's disease research, the discovery of the neurotoxin MPTP in heroin addicts in California, uh, which subsequently revolutionized our ability to establish an animal model of this disease and therefore test out some of the drugs that are directed at the uh, development stages that I've referred to already. And this is some of the work that's going on here at the Western uh, with uh, Dr. Uh, Jonathan Brachi's laboratory. And I'd just like to show you the kind of work that goes on in developing drugs and how we manage to do that. This is a marmoset, a squirrel-like, or at least a um, rodent-type size uh, primate. And the advantage is that they're very small. They don't le need a lot of space to be cared for. But their brains are very uh, human uh, or primate-like. This is the same animal given MPTP, that toxin that you saw in the heroin addicts. And you see that normal movement is completely lost. It sits quite quietly at the bottom of the cage and barely moves. When treated with levodopa, the animal becomes much more mobile. The problem being, if you look at its right hind leg, it has abnormal involuntary movements very much like what we see in our patients with Parkinson's disease. So not only do we have a Parkinson's model that you can test out drugs for symptoms, you can also evaluate drugs designed to help the involuntary movements. And this is the same animal given another drug that is under testing currently for Parkinson's disease. And you see here, in contrast to L-DOPA, the movement of this animal is much more normal. And so this is rather exciting and is something that will help uh, stem uh, drug development in this field. Okay, so that's the development of symptomatic therapy and one way that we can test out novel drugs for the symptoms of Parkinson's and the complications of drugs that we have currently. What about approaches at restoring cellular function, replacing the dying or degenerating neurons? Well, what can we do? There have been a number of studies using fetal grafts, fetal transplants from this region of the brain, the dopamine cells, transplanted into various regions, particularly the regions that lose dopamine in the motor parts of the basal ganglia and down in the substantia nigra where the dopamine cells should be. We've also attempted to use growth promoting factors. This is GDNF, glial derived neurotrophic factor, something that has a very potent effect on causing growth of dopamine cells. And there have been some exciting findings in this kind of work. You see here, I'll show you PET scanning later, but this is a scan of a patient with Parkinson's disease. And normally, this region should be nice and bright all the way through. And this patient received a fetal transplant in both sides of the brain. On the back part, this is the motor part. And this is six months later. And you see a very remarkable recovery in the PET scan. This is another patient who died several years after the transplant of other causes. And you see these brown cells here shouldn't be in this region. These are the brown cells from the transplant. Everything that's brown is manufacturing dopamine. And these are nice, normal appearing dopamine cells that have grown from the fetal graph and have grown into and are regenerating and, and innervating the, uh, the host uh, uh, dopamine deficient brain. So that looks very exciting. This is the preliminary work that was done in England using that growth promoting factor that I told you about. And these are the scores for Parkinson's showing a gradual improvement. Everything that's high is bad, everything that's low is good. And you see over the course of 24 months, these patients improve quite substantially and smaller changes than after fetal graft, but significant improvements in the PET scan studies. However, unfortunately, when these same uh, treatments were studied in what's called a double-blind fashion, when patients receive, some patients receive a sham treatment and other patients receive the actual treatment, there was no clinical benefit seen overall. So these are the sham, this is the transplant. This is a uh, study, very interesting one, where they used pig fetal cells. This is the sham, 
This is the transplant, no difference. This is a study that we did looking at the growth promoting factor and really no difference between the two. So this was very exciting initially, but unfortunately we find that this needs to go back to the drawing board and be studied in more detail. Now the next thing that's coming along in terms of attempting to restore is uh, something called gene therapy. And now uh, researchers have attached a variety of things. AAV is adeno-associated virus. This is a virus that has been removed from its damaging effects, but it can still um, infect brain cells. So viruses infect cells and put their DNA into the cells, but you don't want the viral uh, viruses to reproduce and damage the cells, but what the virus does is implant what you want it to implant into brain cells. And so researchers have used a variety of things. This is a growth promoting factor. This is an enzyme that's important to dopamine. Uh, this is another enzyme involved in neurotransmitter uh, function. So all of these treatments are designed to trying to regenerate the brain. And uh, so we're very hopeful that these might uh, do some good. One of the problems, however, is that Parkinson's disease, as I alluded to earlier, is a much more complicated disease than just dopamine deficiency. Here's again a brain uh, diagram showing this red line as the dopamine-containing cells. These are the cells that are generating. This is this original pathway I showed you in the earlier slide going up to the motor part of the brain, and this is another connection going to an area of the brain that's important for uh, behavior. Now, many of the treatments have limited themselves to this region. So transplantation, for example, and many of the gene therapies limit themselves to this region. The trouble is that that doesn't take into account the fact that there are many other types of dopamine cells that don't project to that region, but project to a variety of other regions quite widely throughout the brain. And then if we take this region and look at it with respect to the extent of the damage in Parkinson's disease, which is just now way up here, Look at how much more complex Parkinson's disease is. It's uh, associated with changes in a variety of different other regions of the brain throughout all of this pink and red containing substance. These are regions that can be affected by Parkinson's disease. So as effective as many of the treatments I've told you to date can be, I think we need to get back to basics and understand this degenerative process and try to stave the disease and stop it from progressing to this much more widely distributed disorder. So that's why I think I'd like to see, and that's why many of us are working quite extensively on trying to develop neuroprotective therapy. And to do that, we need to understand more about the underlying disease. You might remember from one of those earlier slides I talked about or mentioned the Lewy body. This is the little inclusion body. This pink area with a halo around it is sitting in one of the brown uh, nerve cells in the substantia nigra. This is the, the brown uh, neuromelanin, neuromelanin pigment. And these little inclusions are due to the accumulation of proteins. And some proteins are in the center of the inclusion. And another very important protein called alpha-synuclein sits in the periphery, in the halo. And it's understanding these proteins and why do they accumulate and how do they accumulate that's really going to make a breakthrough in Parkinson's disease. So the next question then is what is the cause? And if we could answer this question, I think we'd be a lot further ahead. Is this due to infections? Is it due to your genes? Is it due to toxins in the environment? Or could it be due to a combination of all of these? Well, one really very interesting discovery that's just come out this year that I think is going to teach us a great deal comes from these slides. These are patients, there were two studies that were reported in Nature Medicine, of patients who had had those fetal grafts. Remember I told you about the implantation of fetal dopamine cells? And these patients lived between 11 and 16 years and did pretty well for several years. You see the cells, remember those brown cells I showed you in the earlier slide? Well, very similar kinds of brown dopamine cells contained in the brain. 